Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Shani, for your uh, elaborate uh, introduction. I appreciate the privilege of working with you over those years, uh, many years of uh, nostalgic memories and cooperations. And um, <coughs> so uh, Dr. Kashani asked me to talk about surgery, and it's quite <coughs> limited today to the primary melanoma and the sentinel lymph node biopsy as a new uh, procedure. Uh, <coughs> Dr. Kashani has uh, introduced uh, a very nice uh, broad background, what I'm going to talk about, as well as for the two speakers coming up. And before I do that, I'd like to thank uh, AIM uh, Melanoma Foundation as well uh, for sponsoring this uh, symposium so that uh, we all get together both uh, as caregivers and the patients uh, as one uh, family in a sense to work together uh, to uh, combat this uh, difficult disease. Uh, it's coming along actually quite a long way over the last uh, decade maybe perhaps, and I'll end up a slide with that. So <clears throat> what I'd like to do is that the objectives of uh, this talk would be that uh, you understand the development, the utility of a central lymph node biopsy, which is really a foreign concept uh, 10, 15 years ago. We have a primary melanoma, uh, wherever it is, we decided that uh, a lymph node dissection should be done, a radical one would be done, a lot of uh, uh, potential morbidity, particularly lymphedema, pain, and so forth. And then uh, most of the time the lymph nodes are negative, and uh, basically the lymph node dissection is of no value. Uh, so that is a very important uh, development. And then also uh, that you will know a bit about the current surgical treatment for melanoma. Uh, particularly in the primary setting, because there are different stages of melanoma that surgery uh, can still be effective. And uh, Dr. Kashani has uh, give, uh, us a very, given us a very nice background uh, of the melanoma from the primary perspective and how they're able to deal with it. So it's uh, quite limited to the primary treatment. Uh, you can see the sun exposure. This is uh, his last uh, few slides uh, to, to, to talk about sun exposure. And I think this uh, slide uh, sort of uh, links to his talk. Uh, we all have to go to the sun. The sun is always there. So uh, I'm glad that he talked about the Australian data. And that uh, motivates us to use it, uh, particularly for the fair uh, skin uh, uh, population. Uh, but it, as you can see that the incidence uh, has gone up over the years from 1935 to 2000. Could it be due to the sun exposure? Probably. Uh, now, A, B, C, D, E, uh, again, has uh, is being repeated, but I just uh, have some uh, uh, additional descriptions to us. I'm not going to elaborate this to you, uh, but this is the general uh, pattern, and I think that there are uh, actually uh, exceptions uh, as well, and therefore one should be aware of it. Anything, therefore, is uh, change, particularly the E, the evolution, is very important. So even it looks uh, uh, not A, B, C, D, but uh, there is a change, I think you should uh, uh, have a uh, check with your dermatologist. Now, the uh, National Comprehensive Cancer Network uh, guidelines uh, show that uh, you, you should do, a, in general, whatever a suspected uh, um, melanoma uh, is uh, uh, present, you should do a margin so that uh, it's all excised uh, rather than shave it, because there are issues about shave biopsy, which I'm not going to talk about today. Uh, this gives you a comprehensive evaluation of exactly what Dr. Kashani has talked about in terms of staging, both molecularly, uh, both uh, histologically, and therefore uh, give you the final uh, um, uh, uh, evaluation of the uh, uh, primary stage of melanoma. Uh, these are more uh, technical issues uh, <coughs> in terms of uh, 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 what to do, but uh, sometimes you have a very large lesion, say for example in the face, you may want to do an incision or a punch biopsy so that you get the, the, the full depth of it 
rather than uh, just uh, a part of it, because once you remove the entire area, it, it could be a very significant uh, uh, area of defect. And these are some of the exceptional areas. Uh, so we talk about shape biopsy potentially may compromise the accurate microanatomical assessment of melanoma, but if a very small one, and if it's a deep shape biopsy, <coughs> I think it's also acceptable. Um, the, the guidelines then is that uh, depending on the micro uh, staging of the melanoma, the pathologist is uh, very important to give you the final, uh, the, the depth of it, uh, by Breslow. Uh, Breslow was uh, at one time at NIH developed the system. And so then the margins for the surgeons would be just to uh, sort of uh, using this uh, in general, the standard margins uh, with respect to these uh, Breslow thickness. Now this is an important slide because uh, it gives you the, uh, uh, first of all, the uh, melanoma evolving. Uh, this is a nodular component of it, and if you have some superficial component, it will be around about here. Um, you see the, the, the nodular component doesn't uh, only go uh, up towards the uh, top, but also uh, go down, and this is the most uh, devastating uh, movement of the melanoma, because once you get through this uh, uh, dermal epithelial layer, you can see that uh, it has now the uh, ability to invade uh, into the uh, lymphatic system and into the vascular system. And this is called uh, lymphovascular invasion. And this is the beginning of micrometastasis and the beginning of the damaging and devastating work of melanoma. If you have melanoma restricted over to this layer, melanoma in situ, remove it. The cure rate is very, very good. Uh, but uh, at this particular point, even if you remove it, the problem is that there may be some cells already outside of this limit. And this is the, uh, uh, the, the, the launching pad uh, for metastasis. The body is equipped with a lot of immune system. Dr. Mine is going to talk to you about that. We're still beginning to understand all this, um, but uh, uh, it's just amazing uh, what this particular uh, uh, pattern uh, is uh, that uh, we still uh, have yet to understand. Dr. Kashani talk about the molecular um, uh, determination of these uh, cells uh, as well as the microenvironment. Um, uh, this is actually very much like a Darwinian uh, picture. Here is the uh, 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 melanoma evolving many, many clones, uh, very different uh, clones. And here is the environment that uh, shapes the development of that specific uh, clone. Uh, whichever this environment uh, can destroy those clones, and yet those uh, clones that survive uh, become actually the fittest. And that fittest the clone can now uh, ironically uh, invade the body, uh, which is really what we try to fight against. Uh, so uh, in 1992, Dr. Morton uh, developed this technique uh, where uh, earlier I told you that we would do a radical dissection, but he thought maybe uh, the melanoma of one site would specifically go to a lymph node uh, in the regional lymph node, and that turned out to be quite uh, uh, true because uh, when he took out a blue lymph node uh, uh, and then do a lymph node dissection, uh, in general the concordance C is about 99 percent. So uh, it's a very good uh, uh, test. I mean, if you have a laboratory test which is 99 percent, it's very accurate. This means that the spread to central lymph node is not random, and uh, the previous slide shows you that may be some kind of a, a, a guidance and uh, a, um, a specific uh, molecular uh, sort of uh, 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 um, uh, signals by which the cells can actually move. And that's an important uh, <coughs> point of this uh, slide. Well, um, this is the sentinel the lymph node. As you can see, they will spread from the primary melanoma to the lymph node. And this is the lymph node, uh, in general, is the uh, uh, sort of the gateway, uh, as you can see. Now, a lot of studies have been published uh, since 1992, <coughs> validating that this technique has been uh, adequate. 
And you can see uh, since uh, the publication, a uh, significant number of publications have been uh, 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 available in breast cancer and in melanoma. And uh, the criteria then is to uh, have a melanoma, if it's uh, pathologically diagnosed as one millimeter uh, in breast low thickness, and then if it's less than uh, one millimeter, other features Dr. Kashani has uh, talked to you about uh, are present, we also would then push for the sentinel lymph node biopsy. And then careful pathology review, therefore, is very important. I can't under uh, score this uh, pathology review. You need a very good, uh, experienced pathologist uh, to uh, make sure that this is the case. We have published some papers to show that there could be multiple channels uh, by preoperative lymphocentigraphy uh, to identify the routes of spread uh, uh, of the uh, channels rather than the, the, the actual cells going into the lymph node. So if you have a primary melanoma, you do a study, this only means that uh, uh, these are the channels of the body, the anatomical uh, setup of that particular patient. Uh, uh, we have to still take the lymph node out and then examine under the microscope to show if indeed this is pro positive <coughs> for melanoma and that's what sentinel lymph node biopsy is all about. You can see multiple uh, array of uh, patterns are available in many patients that we have studied um, and if the sentinel, uh, if the multiple channels are present, they tend to be uh, uh, pronostically worse than <coughs> if the patient has only one single channel going to lymph node, wh which makes sense to a certain extent that <coughs> if you have multiple channels, there are many uh, opportunity for the, for the cells to go uh, routes. Uh, a lot of you coming in today, uh, and again, I want to thank you again for, for coming, and uh, some of you are uh, obviously familiar to me. Uh, a freeway system is very much like these channels. Uh, uh, we've got the freeway blocked or something like that, they will go to another routing. Uh, the body, the skin, uh, it, this is not meant to, for the melanoma to travel. It is really our immune system because the, 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 the skin uh, is our protection from the external stimuli. And in fact, immune system is really that skin deep. And so the skin is built with many channels, uh, dendritic cells and everything. Every time when the bacteria, viruses hit the skin, it's ready to launch immune responses. And that's why it needs the lymphatic system to go to the lymph node to excite the dendritic cell to come back and fight the second round. And that really is the purpose of it. But I think melanoma takes a hitchhike, uh, takes the advantage of the system. Uh, this is a uh, paper that we have uh, published that sometimes the melanoma in the trunk may even go to a uh, central lymph node in the breast <coughs> itself. Uh, now this is the sentinel lymph node. You can use blue dye or you can use radioisotope. We now uh, more and more used to be, uh, uh, more and more uh, 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 used now to the uh, uh, radioisotope because uh, it's more sensitive than the blue dye and the blue dye uh, uh, sometimes can also give you uh, allergic reactions so uh, it's quite expensive actually the blue dye so if you are experienced enough you can use either one <coughs> of the tracer to identify the sentinel lymph node and you can see that uh, the amount of tissue being removed from the sentinel lymph node biopsy it is relatively <coughs> small and limited and you can see therefore the less being removed, obviously, uh, the less uh, 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 um, damage is to the body and <coughs> less uh, chance of uh, 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 side effects, complications, uh, particularly lymphedema. You can see that uh, uh, before the central lymph node biopsy, we had to take out all this tissue in order to assess the uh, uh, <coughs> status of the lymph node. But also that once you have one lymph node, it's more specific for the pathologist now to uh, take a good look of all these uh, uh, areas rather than this uh, large specimen which uh, the pathologist cannot do by individually cut into uh, <coughs> sections. So therefore, this enhances the accuracy also for the, uh, 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 what Dr. Kirshani has told you about micrometastasis. Here's a simple picture. Uh, a, a case, uh, I don't want to show a lot of pictures because uh, sometimes uh, 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 
you know, for for uh, for for a patient group. Uh, some patients may not want to see all these pictures, but this is just an example. For example, this uh, patient had a melanoma here. We're still using the blue dye th those today, and then the lymphocentigraphy shows a central lymph node here. Uh, we take out the central lymph node, and uh, you can see a single cell. Uh, diagnosis of uh, micrometastasis, and this patient unfortunately had micrometastasis, so we did a lymph node dissection, and uh, she's doing fine at this point. Now you can see that Dr. Morton did a, a randomized study finding that uh, patients with negative central lymph node would do much better. So when you look at those curves, if you're not familiar with it, whenever the lower curve is, usually it's a worse uh, a group of patients because they're now <coughs> coming back with recurrences or uh, some other event. And then uh, if they are holding a flat line, uh, that means they're not, uh, they're doing well with no recurrences. Uh, here is another uh, important uh, study where the patients were randomized in this group of patients from 1.2 to 3.5 millimeter breast low that uh, at the time initially with the uh, uh, diagnosis, they were randomized to either sentinel lymph node biopsy and the Y excision or uh, Y excision only. And patients uh, uh, will only be uh, uh, then uh, uh, asked uh, and recommended to have lymph node dissection when uh, the, 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 the bed of the regional uh, bed shows uh, an enlarging lymph node. In this setting, uh, although that two groups are not uh, equally randomized, the suggestion is that uh, uh, if you watch and if the lymph node grows to a larger area, those patients will do uh, much uh, worse than patients who have been removed when the, the uh, melanoma is uh, in its very early stage, so-called micrometastasis. And you can see the difference between micrometastasis and macrometastasis. We're seeing less and less when we're doing uh, central lymph node now, uh, but uh, this group of patients definitely do much worse <coughs> than this group of patients. And we have done study as well to show uh, that uh, uh, this data is quite well validated. And so the algorithm then is that uh, uh, of all the things Dr. Kashani told you, the patients would then uh, uh, be consulted. Uh, we decided that the surgery is needed. A uh, central lymph node is indicated. We do a preoperative <coughs> lymphocentigraphy. Well, then we use the intraoperative approach to map the sentinel lymph node, take the sentinel lymph node, goes to the pathology, look under the microscope. If it's uh, negative, we observe the patients. And if it's positive, we uh, do a completion lymph node dissection. And uh, uh, this seems to be now the uh, normal flow of uh, algorithm. And this seems to be the focal point of metastasis. But about 20% uh, of the time, though, it escapes the lymph node and it goes systematically, so systematically uh, in, in terms of into the systemic sites. And, and that we still don't know how to un explain it. And so uh, the hypothesis is that about 80% of the cells would like to go to lymph node first, stay there for a while, and then 20% uh, of the time they just bypass the lymph node. And we don't know the molecular differences and mechanisms of these two groups of the cells yet. And I think that the Dr. Kashani's uh, study will uh, hopefully eventually be able to tell us that a primary melanoma with such molecular uh, definitions uh, will only go uh, to the uh, bloodstream and not go to the lymph nodes, and then vice versa. So if that's the case, we can then target those uh, melanoma uh, 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 patients with additional treatment that's appropriate. Uh, in terms of hopefully uh, targeting the vascular channel. Now, a few slides just quickly to show you that the pattern is uh, heterogeneous, meaning varied. They don't just go like that pattern. And then STARTS has shown that you can measure the distance of the melanoma just like you would do in the primary site in the lymph node, uh, the depth of the uh, invasion in the lymph node. And he can show that if the uh, invasion is uh, significantly higher, uh, and then if you do a, sex, a subsequent lymph node dissection, which I have indicated to you, then the positivity of that lymph node, uh, uh, of that dissection uh, in the lymph node specimens 
uh, is significantly increased. Uh, uh, you can see again micrometastasis here, and uh, we also have shown that uh, uh, if the, uh, the uh, subsequent uh, uh, specimen, which we call the non central lymphocompartment, compartment, is positive, the patients do again worse. Of course, uh, this is important when, if the treatment <coughs> is available, because this will be a group of patients that can be treated. And uh, of course, a lot of studies are ongoing to uh, uh, assess uh, uh, how these uh, patients should be uh, managed. Um, uh, this is a, a head and neck uh, paper that we just published showing, uh, again, the differences that uh, are, are validated, that uh, the patients with positive uh, lymph node, uh, central lymph nodes would do much worse. And, but if you compare with the head and neck, the trunk and extremity, uh, the head and neck uh, melanoma, however, actually do uh, uh, worse than the trunk and extremity. So now, uh, a new uh, 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 identification factor comes into place. The sites of the body uh, become somewhat an uh, issue here. So the head and neck melanoma seems to be more uh, invasive, more virulent uh, than the trunk and extremity. And so head and neck, as Dr. Kashani says, that you, know, you can see yourself every day in the mirror maybe it's a very important place to, uh, for you to examine uh, and look at it. And uh, in fact, a few, uh, not infrequently, scalp melanomas are discovered by barbers <coughs> because when they're taking care of the hair, they find some uh, bumpiness in the scalp, and that's how uh, sometimes it's discovered. Uh, any, uh, Ray, I have a few more slides to conclude that this is a important procedure um, it, it is a, a multidisciplinary approach in terms of uh, uh, assessing the uh, 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 patient's uh, uh, regional lymph node and uh, prognosis. And uh, Dr. Uh, Kashani has talked about the staging value of this, and, and I'm not going to repeat this again. Uh, again, uh, that uh, <coughs> certainly uh, the uh, mobility is significantly uh, decreased uh, for those patients who do not need uh, lymph node dissection uh, and, and, and just the central lymph node. Th this particular phenomena, the, the central lymph node uh, concept, is very much in tune with Dr. Hellman's uh, proposal that uh, cancer uh, with micrometastasis central lymph nodes uh, 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 in, in one sense validates uh, his spectrum theory that cancer spread is progressive. And what does it mean to uh, uh, patients in general? Is that the early diagnosis leads to early removal of cancer with an increased chance of a cure. And that's very important to remember. If you don't remember anything from this slide, uh, please remember this slide. <laughs> And then the end would be the staging, which he did not show you exactly, but he actually did talk about stage one, two, three, four. You can see how uh, stage one enjoys a very favorable uh, prognosis, even at 15 years. Uh, we have uh, come a long way from the uh, early diagnostic point of view. There is molecular uh, revolution uh, using molecular taxonomy, using genomic profiles and sequencing, perhaps. In the uh, regional lymph node, there is the uh, surgical uh, revolution, the central lymph node biopsy for melanoma. And then the medical revolution, which would be uh, followed by Dr. Minor and uh, uh, Dr. <coughs> Hammett uh, uh, coming up uh, the, uh, with respect to immunotherapy and molecular targeting. A lot of uh, interesting uh, 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 new trends are uh, forthcoming. And so uh, the road to melanoma research and treatment uh, shows uh, relatively bright. Uh, and I think Dr. <laughs> uh, Maina will even propose uh, could be a cure soon. All right. Thank you very much.